Yeah, okay, so for, for those of you who are joining us now, um, this is going to be a Zoom, this lesson is going to be uh, on Zoom, but it's going to be in a regular class, um, film like this. So we're going to be using the board here. Um, so it's uh, slightly different. Okay, so um, I think we can start, and I'll just um, start discussing what's going to be going on in this course. Um, and maybe I'll start with the technicalities of this uh, course. By the way, I don't know, if you're here by mistake, this is a quantum technologies course. Um, uh, mixed grad and undergrad course. And uh, I'm Shay. Nice to meet you. This is my name here. Shay? OK. Um, and maybe I'll start with the technicalities of this course and the syllabus and what you need. Um, for this course. So this course, uh, because I've had just uh, quite a bunch of uh, email questions about this, um, apparently it wasn't clear. At the end of this course, there will not be an exam. There will be a seminar. OK? So uh, each of you will give a seminar. It will be a 10 or a 15 minute seminar. We will decide exactly at the end. And at the end of that seminar, there will be questions. So your grade will be based upon this seminar, uh, upon two exercise sets <coughs> that I will give throughout the semester, and also participation. Okay, there's some feedback. Someone can someone can mute themselves. There we go. Um, Shai, will this be recorded? Yes, this is recorded. Your faces are not recorded. This is recorded. Uh, okay. Okay, your faces are not recorded. Um, Thank you. Yeah, and if you want to say something, just unmute yourself and ask, of course. Okay, so there will be seminar, there will be exercises, two exercise sets throughout the semester, maybe a third one, I don't know, depending how it goes. Um, and third thing is what we call class participation. Okay, this will be a small part of your grade, but maybe mo the most important thing, okay? You do need to participate. If you have a camera, please turn it on. This is like, uh, this is a graduate course which undergrads are allowed to join. Um, and I really do like to try to generate as much That's discussion right as possible in this class. So please feel free to um, join the discussion and, and ask questions and so on. Um, the, course, um, the course is going to be built up of uh, three parts. Okay. Um, the first part, okay, the first part um, is going to be an introduction to quantum information. QI, Introduction to Quantum Information. Uh, to those of you who already took a quantum information course, this will be a kind of quick review. We're not going to go into depth into what else, to what the quantum information course did, but we're just going to give the basics to get everybody um, uh, on the same level. Um, so this will be a short beginning to this course. The second part is going to be an introduction to uh, quantum optics. Okay? Uh, so basically, you know, QED, low energy QED, light matter interaction. Uh, and this will have kind of emphasis on, um, on NMR. Okay, maybe computing with a single photon. Single photons. And um, you know, two-level systems interacting with uh, light. Okay, so spins interacting with light. Um, this is going to be the second part, and this is going to bring us all to a certain baseline where we can actually discuss the quantum technologies in themselves. Um, I don't know. If you can see the, in the recording, you can't see the bottom. Now, in terms of the technologies, uh, we're going to have two guest lectures 
uh, in the semester. Um, one of the guest lectures is going to be on uh, cold atoms. Uh, this is going to be given to us by Yuav Sagi. And the second guest lecture, let me write guest lecture. And the second guest lecture is going to be on trapped ions. Uh, and this is going to be given to us by Rui Ozeri. Yeah. Um, Yoav is here from the Technion uh, Physics Department, and Rui Ozeri, he's from the Weizmann Institute, so he's going to come in. Uh, and they're going to give us guest lectures on that subject. So that will be the atoms, the trapped ions. Um, the quote-unquote guest lecture on superconducting qubits Uh, that's going to be me. Uh, that's my speciality. That's uh, my subject. So I'm going to be giving the guest lecture on that subject. But that will be towards the end of the semester. Okay. Uh, what we're going to do um, during this lesson is this is going to be kind of like a lighthearted intro lesson to explain to all of you what is going to go on in this course and what do we mean by quantum technologies? What are you going to learn and do in this course? Um, and so I will start with, with the question of what are quantum technologies? Okay. Um, maybe I'll write it down. What are quantum? I mean, when we say quantum technologies, what do we mean? Okay, um, and you all have like these voting panels, like uh, I think we can, if I look at the participants here on the screen, you can all kind of like vote yes and no, so I think that might be a nice tool to understand what everybody's thinking, so as I ask things just, you know, click yes or no, and I'll give you back, you know, look at the feedback of the statistics of what's going on, but I'll just go through technologies and tell me if you think they're uh, quantum technologies, okay? Um, the wheel? Start voting, yes or no. Is the wheel a quantum technology? Um, I'm looking at the votes here. Everybody seems to agree that the wheel is not a quantum technology. Okay, that's good. Um, how about fire? Fire? Anyone want to say yes? No, everybody thinks fire is not a quantum technology. Uh, I mean, there's some combustion there, right? There are some molecules. Maybe it is? I don't know. Okay, let's make it more interesting. Radio? Is radio a quantum technology? Radio, TV? Still no one is voting yes. Uh, one person is voting yes. Okay. Do you want to say why yes? Or just keep it like that? Okay, we'll keep it like that. Uh, transistor? Anyone saying a transistor is a quantum technology? Oh, we're starting to get more and more yeses. LEDs, lasers, MRIs, all those. Oh, so you're starting to agree that those are quantum technologies. Okay. Atomic clocks, quantum computers. We only have one person, Daniel, who thinks a quantum computer is not a quantum technology. Okay, or he's not listening to us. Great, okay. Um, so what I want to do is maybe let's start from the beginning. Um, and I want to start with a quote. So I'm going to write here uh, a quote now. Um, maybe so I don't miswrite it. I'll take this paper. Uh, I'm going to write a quote on the board and read it out. Um, Sorry, I have a question. Yes. Can we ask a question in Hebrew? Uh, you can ask a question in Hebrew, yes. Um, I think that's okay. Go ahead. Okay. okay, thank you. Oh, that was the question? Can you ask in Hebrew? Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, all right. Okay. Um, so, uh, yes? Are the, where, are the seminaries would be in Hebrew? Are the? Sorry, I couldn't hear that last word. Are the? 
the seminars that they oh the seminars that you will need to present yeah. um yes. they will be preferably in english if you really have a hard time you can do that in hebrew that will be okay yeah yeah okay so so the answer is if you know if you feel strongly about it you can give your seminar in hebrew and that's fine okay all right um so we never experiment with just one atom, electron, or molecule. in thought experiments we sometimes assume that we do This invariably entails ridiculous consequences. Anyone know whose quote is that from? Anyone? Lucky guess? No? So this quote... Feynman? Who? Feynman? Feynman? No, no, not Feynman. But that's a, that's a good guess. This is our Erwin Schrodinger. Okay. Erwin Schrodinger. Uh, this is from, if you want the reference, it is the British Journal... Um, of the philosophy of science. So it's a BJPS 3-1952. Okay, so not so far ago, okay, in the 50s. Um, and I think I would like to add to this, uh, being uh, quite a few years after that, so dot, 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 Move forward to the, sorry, beginning of next millennia. This is when most of you were born, I think, right? Or some, some of you. Uh, we can add, you know, apparently we do. Um, and, and this is basically what this course is about, okay? Um, if we have, you know, quantum theory we know from the beginning of the 20s, okay? Um, and when we understand it, and it hasn't really changed since then, and quantum theory, you know, it brought up those early technologies like uh, lasers, microwaves, transistors, and things like that. Um, and those are quantum technologies, but those are not quite the quantum technologies that we're talking about in this course. Um, we're really talking about what I would say advanced quantum technology. So we're thinking of demonstrations, really, of control of single degrees of freedom or small degrees of freedom. Okay? So, you know, manipulation of atoms, molecules, photon, quantum dots, basically everything that breaks this uh, quote um, that is up here. Um, this is what I would call advanced quantum technology. Sometimes people like to call that the second quantum revolution. And this is basically uh, what this course is about. Okay, so we're talking about uh, precise 
control, right? Technology is basically about control, okay? Precise control of a few degrees of freedom, okay? A few quantum, if you want to say, degrees of freedom, okay? Uh, so this is what this course is about. Okay, so in that context, in the course of our context, you know, fire is not a quantum technology, but even a transistor is not what we're talking about here, because that is known for many, many years. Okay. Um, now, initially, can I ask a question? Yes, please do. Uh, can you clarify, please, what do you mean by uh, precise control? Oh well, we're going to learn that along the course, but. Um, what I mean by precise control, you can remove precise if you want, but um, precise maybe would mean to enable us to... In a specific theory, I guess. Mm -hmm. it, it, precision, it's given within a specific theory that describes the things, like... Yeah, yeah. So, so precise control, I would say, as good as we want it to be to achieve some goal, okay? That, you know, so maybe precise is not the perfect word for it, but maybe sufficient. <laughs> maybe we'll replace it with, hang on, I'll erase this. And maybe I'll replace this with a sufficient. Sufficient control for a few degrees of freedom. Is that, I think that may be fit, that might fit better with you uh, like that. Okay, so we want to achieve something at the end of the day, okay? Um, now, the thing is that it wasn't, you know, originally the idea was not, you know, the drive was not technology, okay? It's not that we thought about, okay, uh, what we want is to reach these technologies, we want to build a quantum computer, no, because, you know, at first people thought, you know, things don't work out that way, okay? Um, we will never achieve control over single degrees of freedom, as is quoted over there. Okay? Uh, but there were two main motivators, basically, if you think about it. Um, and the two main motivators that led up to all these things are, one, the peculiar quantum properties. You start learning about quantum mechanics and things like that, and you see all these peculiar properties like entang entanglement, tunneling, superposition, all those things, um, and it's the it's the human thirst, the knowledge to want to kind of see what's there. You want to see the entanglement directly. You want to see the tunneling directly. You want to see this as close as possible. Okay. And the second thing is we look around us, and the world around us is classical. But when we do these experiment, we see these uh, quantum effects. And there's just some transition between the quantum world and the classical world. And in my view, at least, those two main motivators led up to um, what we call textbook experiments. Okay? Uh, and these textbook experiments, okay, um, their role is really to, to show us that developing of those experiments allowed us to to be able to control the quantum degrees of freedom, okay? To allow us to explore the quantum world, okay? Um, and it's these experiments and the drive to get to these experiments, the tools that were developed by researchers for these experiments led to the, uh, to the capability, to the realization that from just being tools to get to these uh, textbooks experiments, they can be developed into very advanced technologies like computation, communication, and all these new nascent quantum technologies that we're going to be talking about, okay? So the technologies that we want to talk about, okay, um, are really technologies that enable us to control these single or few uh, quantum degrees of freedom, okay? That it will allow us to do, you know, computing, communication, metrology, and things like that which are beyond classical capabilities, okay? So this is what, what we're talking about. And just kind of like, I'm, I'm sure none of, a lot of you are not very familiar with up-to-date uh, 
literature and papers. So what I want to show now, maybe on the screen, is a few papers that show really landmark experiments, okay? That show things that can relate to basic quantum phenomena that you've already learned about. And you'll see how recent and how technologically advanced they were, okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a share screen. Uh, you can ask questions in the meantime, okay? Um, maybe I'll do a share screen. I'll open it up. Um, the, um, and for the recording, the, the PDF files that I'm showing up now, they're going to be linked. Okay, so whoever's watching the recording can just open up these files. Um, and so what I'm going to start off, for example, is this paper over here. Okay, uh, so this is a paper from, well, I don't remember the exact year, but it's pretty recent, 2015. Okay, this is a loophole-free Bell inequality. So you've learned about uh, probably uh, Bell states. Um, and this is a... 2015, this is a very elaborate experiment where they created pairs of photons, you can see here in the picture, um, at one side, and they sent them to about 1.3 kilometers away from each other, uh, and they correlated uh, the two photons. Okay, this was a pretty massive experiment, um, and it showed a very, very fundamental thing. Okay, so this is one example uh, of such a paper. Uh, another example of such a paper, over here, maybe, um, this is 2013, this is with a superconducting qubits, uh, observing of single quantum trajectories of a superconducting qubit. So this is basically a direct observation of uh, a collapse of the wave function, okay, in a sense. What's happening, and we maybe discuss it a little bit, is that you have a single qubit, a two-level system, um, and it is being weakly observed and as the state is going from superposition, for example, into one of the eigenstate, you can observe the trajectory along the block sphere. Okay, so something like this, um, or maybe a nice figure over here. So here is plotted the x, y, and z components of such an experiment. So these are like kind of landmark experiments that show very, very basic fundamental abilities. This experiment, for example, goes all the way to actually trying to understand what is happening in the measurement process itself. You know, always talking to us about measurement is spooky and everything, but this is actually trying to test these things, okay? The previous one that I showed is actually trying to test, you know, basic things like Bell inequalities, and uh, there are other experiments, uh, for example, by Serge Hiroch, uh, Nobel Prize winner. This is quantum jump, so basically this is a setup. Um, so this paper by Serge Hiroch, he takes these uh, Rydberg atoms, this is in a cavity QED, we'll also talk about this technology, and you send atoms through this cavity, and he was able to actually observe the quantum jump. So what you can see here in this figure is the statistics of the quantum jumps. Okay, so this is another fundamental property, okay, so driven by fundamental science, the want to see actually these quantum things in action. Um, and, you know, I can't, without being uh, a little out of line and doing self-promotion, for example, uh, and showing another paper. Maybe it's not such a landmark, but it's my paper, so I have to see it. And this is basically also measuring uh, these trajectories, the collapse of this wave function, but when two operators that do not commute are being measured at the same time. Okay, now you know, or may have, may have heard, that you cannot measure uh, two non-commuting operators at the same time, um, but that's not a precise statement. The precise statement is you cannot project two operators at the same time, but you can measure them. A projection is something uh, that is instantaneous. A measurement is a real process and it takes a final time, and you can measure two operators uh, that don't commute at the same time, and you can actually observe what happens uh, to, the, to this collapse process. Okay, so these are experiments that look at fundamental properties. And it's the tools that we build for these fundamental experiments um, that lead us and bring the ability to, to make these demonstrations. Now, there are many demonstrations, and you can go look for, for many advanced papers that show these really beautiful uh, experiments. Okay, so I'll stop the share and go to that. Okay, um, so what I want to say that at this point, really, 
um, in the, the history or whatever. One, we understand quantum mechanics. Okay? It's the same thing that was developed in the 1920s. We do understand it very well on the theoretical level. Okay? This is important to know. And at this point in time, we know that quantum works. It works very well to any precise experiment that we've done. We know that it works you know, pretty to the utmost precision. It's the most tested theory ever in experiments. And on the low energy scale, on the earthly scale, okay, we don't know what happens uh, out of that yet, but uh, quantum works. And from that stance, what we're doing here in this course and in this whole thing that's called quantum technologies is we're in search of control. Okay? All right. Um, so, um, okay, so maybe I'll take a couple of questions and then um, we'll take a five minute break or 10 minute break and then we'll, I'll continue to now go into the details of how the course is going to be structured and what exactly are we're going to be learning in this course. Okay? Um, anyone has a question before the break? Good. Okay, so take a. Yes? Yes. The material, is the material for this course will be published in the Moodle? The material for this course will be published. What do you mean? In what sense? The videos are online. Uh, the, PDF, the, PDF file, the PDF file. The PDF file. These PDF files that I showed, yeah, they'll be on the Moodle. The videos are on the Moodle. Every time I give a lecture or something, I will write down which um, which book I'm following, which chapter I'm following. Um, so you can take out those books and look in the relevant chapters. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. So let's take a 10-minute break, and uh, then we'll go into a little bit more details of what we're going to do in this course. <laughs>